got to get quenched real quick, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, okay, here it goes. Here it goes. <laughs> uh, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode 32 of the Unlaced Podcast. Ah, uh, yeah, 32, bro. We're getting up there. We're on, like, we're getting on a roll, bro. Like, this year, we've been on a roll. Like, besides that, That's that, uh, what, two weeks ago where we did record? Well, we've been on a, yeah, we went on a tear. Yeah. Um, I'm your host, Chris. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm your co host, Chris. I apologize. Uh, after last week, <laughs> I'm definitely now the co host. Uh, I have Damn, my bro. host Gabe with me, and we, what up, we family we ran it back. All right, y'all, we ran it back because you know last week was such a great episode. We had great conversation. You know, we talked about uh, New York sneaker culture, all that stuff, and then you know, of course, you know, news broke, so we had to bring back Miguel Felix back. You know, what's up, Miguel? How you doing, bro? Come on, y'all. What, what up, up player? Yeah, he he graciously agreed to you know run it back for us. Uh, this is a unlaced first, so just as you know, you know, thank you for you know just just say, you know what we're gonna double back, we're we're gonna double back and just get back into it, um, because I I looking back at that episode, so that episode was about an hour and forty five minutes, um, mm-hmm. but we got really a lot of conversation, but it was a lot of it was because like you had kind of blew through all of our questions, so it was just like we got to know everything we need to know about you you know, just off of you just sharing, you know, your story and everything like that. So we got to, you know, just get through it because, you know, we didn't have to ask questions. You just already knew ahead of time. Like, yo, I'm about to, I'm about to just uh-huh. go like, break down. I'm about to turn up. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I felt like since now this episode, I feel like this episode we could really get into, you know, the topics because we had crazy mm-hmm. news break. But before that, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, everybody watching on YouTube, uh, everybody listening on all streaming platforms, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all those great uh, platforms. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, Please make sure that if you guys are listening to us on any streaming platforms that you rate our podcast uh, five stars if you love hearing our voices and love hearing us talk about sneakers and stuff in the culture. Uh, That helps us on that on those platforms because you know I always talk about the YouTube platforms are like liking and and subscribing and all that stuff but on those platforms you guys can rate us you know by stars if we get I'm, i want five stars from everybody that's listening right now that's unacceptable thank you off the board you know and if but if we're if we aren't or if we're not performing at five stars come to youtube and comment below why we're not five stars and why you gave us four stars but thank you for you know uh, beforehand for all the great ratings and five star ratings uh, on youtube please like subscribe and share uh please share and let everybody know about us. You know, we're working really hard to get these out to you. Um, I know uh, a couple weeks ago we uh, we missed a, a week, but, it, you know, there's a lot going on. But we're back now. We're, we're back here, ready, mm-hmm. feeling good, refreshed. You know, brains are, you know, are, are I don't know what a word to use for function. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, so we are back. So thank you guys, everybody, for joining us. All that. Uh, make sure that you guys follow us on Unlaced X Podcast as well as Unlaced X Threads. Uh, we will be giving you guys more information about drops coming at the end of the show. So make sure you guys stay for that. Um, but now, let's get into it. So we sat here, had a great conversation last week. You know, mm-hmm. was talking. You know, chucking it up about Trophy Room and all those different things, and, and you know, just having a great time. You know, all the conspiracies of what goes on you know, with Jordan Brand and Nike. And then sure enough, what happens on Monday? News breaks. Nike VP connected to Sun, who is a reseller. And, you know, then as you guys a major know, one at that. Major, major reseller at that. Um and story news breaks. Uh a Ann Herbert, that's her that's her name, Ann Herbert. Uh uh, mostly a v- VP because she was there. She's been there for 25 years, 25 year Nike employee. Uh, mm-hmm. Most of her stint there has been VP uh, for uh, for Nike and come to find out her son um, from her son doing an interview. Uh, let me get his name because I did not know who this was until the story broke. Uh, let me get her, Let me get his name. Joe, West Coast Joe. Yeah. West Coast Joe. There you go. West Coast yeah. Joe does an interview and just just so happens that information that his mom is the is the employee of Nike and then that you know snowballs into more information of you know how he was getting shoes um come to find out that she was basically funding his company uh with Mm -hmm. because all the company stuff was on her credit card you know so ultimate you know 
using mom's credit card to fund your sneaker habit, you know, crazy. Um, and so then just, you know, the chip started to fall down, you know, about, you know, how legit the sneakers app is because he's, you know, cleaning the house on, um, mm-hmm. on releases. She, and, okay. I was going to ask, she actually, she's like, she like led that project, right? The whole, the whole sneakers app. Yeah. So she was, she was part of, you know, she was part of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, in the article, I, when I read the article, we'll, you know, get it into that, but um. Yeah, so that just starts that whole, you know, snowball effect. Um, then everybody mm-hmm. uh, starts questioning because, you know, then the pictures of him with, you know, the, you know, bunch of stacked up pair, walls of pair of shoes um, on release day. You know, of course, mm-hmm. like, okay, well, now how's this, you know, now this kind of makes sense. And then most recently comes to find out that he was getting a lot of his pair through the employee discount that she got from the headquarters. Through the social account? Yeah. So wow. he was getting employee discounts on uh, on stuff. So you have a guy that has a company that is being funded by his mom's credit card, um, getting employee discounts, and then just basically looking like this badass reseller that just can't not win um, on mm-hmm. releases. So um, before I get you guys started, I'm going to read part of this article. Uh, Complex, They this article was like a three or four paragraph article like they really this is the first time i've seen single blogs like really dive into you know details as you know as mm-hmm. we, me and you gave have talked about like them being very coy about stuff so i'm gonna start here uh so uh uh this article is from complex uh reseller son of nike of x nike vp used employee store discount for his businesses uh there you go uh, scandal shook last week, uh, shook Nike last week as Ann Herbert, an employee of 25 years who most recently served as vice president of the brand's North America business, resigned from her position following a Bloomberg Business Week story uncovering her son's sneaker resale operation. The bombshell piece focused on the West Coast streetwear and Oregon based business run by Herbert's 19 year old son, Joe, who was selling upward of $200,000 a month in sneakers at one point. Sources tell Complex that part of his operation involved buying up discounted Nike products from the brand's company store, formerly known as the employee store, to which only Nike employees, their friends and family, and those with uh, guest pass have access to in, su- in the suburbs of Portland, Oregon. Uh, quote, he just has people go in there, buy a bunch of stuff, come back out, then they drive to his warehouse and drop it off. End quote, says one reseller who asks, that their name be withheld. Yeah, they're gonna, people are gonna, you know, <laughs> try to <laughs> shy themselves away from this mm-hmm. as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bloomberg Biz, uh, Business Week story did not specify whether Joe's biz directly benefited from Mother's high ranking role at, at the world's most powerful sneaker company. It established a connection between Joe's business and his mother's, whose name reportedly appeared on a West Coast, West Coast Streetwear credit card statement shared with Bloomberg Business Week. But Joe told the outlet that he didn't receive any inside information about Nike from her out of due diligence and disclosed her son's involvement as a reseller to Nike mm-hmm. in 2018. And her employee him, employer reportedly told Bloomberg Biz there, there was no violation of the company's policy. Still news of the connection prompted rampant speculation online that nepotism, sorry, enabled the teenage reseller sneaker Sneaker collectors increasingly frustrated at their own inability to buy limited edition items were furious at the photos of Joe posing next to towers of towers, towering stacks of rare pairs. They believe Anne had granted her son access to Nike's most exclusive product, cheating the system in favor of her family. The anger was part. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the anger was participated by the fat by the similar fiasco around the Trophy Room Air Jordan 1, which we talked about, secret created by Michael Jordan's son, Marcus, who cre- credibly alleged to have resold his own shoes for massive profit. Sneaker reselling is mm-hmm. widespread. Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry, that just kind of goes into uh, backstory. But yeah, so who wants to start this off? You. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, um, so... <laughs> Okay, so I saw this. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys. I'm I'm gonna give you guys all my different viewpoints from this whole situation. When I saw it happen, okay, what I learned uh-huh. about it, what I read about it, all that. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. saw it, 
and I, I think I told you, and Gabe, um, I told you off camera, you know, that I was handling business. So I couldn't, I, when I saw it, I was, you know, busy. So I didn't get a chance to actually sit down and actually read the mm-hmm. article. I just saw mm-hmm. Nike VP, son, reseller. And I just laughed. It was like, yo, that's, that's insane. And of course mm-hmm. it wouldn't have surprised me, but you know, it was just funny. Um, then later on in the week, I was able to sit down and actually read the article. And um, I'm going to tell you, I still laugh, but it was it was more funny that they tried well that from what out from what it would read and what from people were saying was he did not want to um he did not want to disclose what that his mom worked at um at nike that was something mm-hmm. that was supposedly supposed to be off the record which um, is probably which, yeah you would which was assumed. probably i'm 100 percent sure that is what happened because we all know we've seen plenty of documentaries where somebody says, yo, I want this off the record. Uh, and somebody that's reporting gets greedy and is like, you know, I'm just going to sneak this in. And hopefully nobody finds out that, you know, I, you know, I broke whatever moral code that comes in journalism and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So he, he tells them, he tells them off the record, they decide to still publish it that, you know, he is the son of a Nike VP. Um, all hell breaks loose because now his credibility is shot and then her credibility is shot. Um, uh, mm-hmm. I would not. I when I first read it, I was not surprised. I felt like mm-hmm. I thought this would probably happen more often than not. Um, mm-hmm. and it's kind of one of those things where I sit and think, well, a 19 year old who understands that, and we we talked about this monetary value over actual love of the culture. And yeah. I'm not going to say that he doesn't actually like sneakers. I can't, you know, I can't speak for him. Um, hopefully it is. And it came from a good place. And it was just, yo, I have the ability to. And it's like that. But kids at that age, because it's 19, see a monetary value with something. And especially when it comes mm-hmm. to limited shoes that have a price tag put ahead of the release of, yo, this is dropping in two weeks. But on StockX, they're already going for, you know, $2,000 that's where you start seeing, okay, he's going to take advantage of, yo, my mom works at Nike. Yo, she has inside mm-hmm. plugs. I go to the employee store every weekend when, you know, when I get free mm-hmm. time. And so, of course, she, he was going to take advantage of that. Fumble. Fumble. Sorry, he was having a bad dream. Um, I have a fourth member right now, bro? <laughs> fourth <laughs> member of the podcast? <laughs> my bad, he was having a bad dream. Um, so, of course, he's going to take advantage of the situation of, yo, I have these connections. I'm going to use them. Yeah, I could not yeah. blame him. I'm going to say I don't blame him because if my mom worked at Nike and she had a high uh, ranking position there, I would not do anything that would mess up her job. Nothing that would, you know, because, you know, I 19, I'm, that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, well, he's, you know, selling. He has a whole resale mm-hmm. market. But I'm saying, like, for me, I wouldn't want to do nothing to, like, possibly fuck up uh cash flow for moms and mm-hmm. possibly the house that I live in as well. I don't want to, you know, I'm not gonna yeah. mess that up. But I get yo, yo, mom works at Nike. Yo, we could just we could just shoot up to the employee store. Like she we can get in there and we can, you know, we can get mm-hmm. you know 50, 60 percent off <laughs> on, on some shoes right now. We could get some shit that people don't are are still looking for. And yo bring it back to the warehouse, sell it to everybody for, you know, 200% plus whatever uh, market value is, whatever, and Mm -hmm. just eat. Everybody eats there. It sucks when I think about those because I'm pretty sure, because in the article they say that she disclosed it to him in 2018, so Nike was like, all right. It sucks because she felt like she had to leave her job. And now I don't know because it doesn't necessarily because even an article I read when it first came out, I don't understand. I don't understand why she resigned based off of just this interview coming out of, yo, your son is a high, high status reseller in the city community. Like, I don't understand why that resulted in you saying, you know, what, I'm just going to step back unless that was mm-hmm. already in her plans at some point. But it just seems like it seems like one of those jumping the gun before shit gets too hot. Let me get out the way. Well, from my understanding, like you would resign to retain something, right? If you're mm-hmm. at a company, you're resigning to retain whatever it is that you've worked and and amassed up to that point. Yeah. So I think she just dipped before she lost whatever she had coming her way in terms of 
finances. But wouldn't that still? But wouldn't Nike still be able to double back and just say, "Well, even though you resign, if we find a, like conflict of well, interest even, with the company, we uh-huh. can still pull mm-hmm. whatever whatever pension or whatever." You no, know, you're right. Shit you got, but going on? they clearly didn't care if she if she had already told them in 2018. Yeah. So Which is why I, I'm like just, so confused as yeah. why she would resign in the first place because like she could still mm-hmm. go and just be like, well, no, I told y'all in 2018, y'all can't, yeah, y'all can't touch me. Nothing has changed unless he's yeah. like, unless you can prove that something like because it would then make me believe there's something that she was doing that possibly would have been looked at as, yo, this is not, this is not there, uh, aligned yeah. with our policy. Yeah. Um. I, I think, man, I don't, I don't, I mean, I hear you, but I don't, I don't, I don't think that way with okay. the situation. Um, I think, first of all, a great big F, F him to like, like, it's just, how, I don't know, man. I just think that being in that situation and having that opportunity and, and really like milking the whole farm, like not even one cow, like milk the whole farm, bro. Like the whole fleet of cows um there has to be a lot more insight than just have being able to use a swoosh account and being able to buy pairs at at discount or whatever because some of those photos bro like my man has like full-size runs like store inventories like it's not just it's not just a few kicks here and there or one shipment of him like he's stacked yeah and i think you have to like you don't just you don't just get that from having people walk in and walk out of a of an employee store. Mm-hmm. Like, there has to be a, a more. He he needed. He's definitely more connected in that sense than I think he's leading. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and I mean I wouldn't tell. Yeah, I wouldn't tell either. I wouldn't explain to anyone. But I just think like <laughs> there's more to it. It was a lot easier than just uh, employee stores. Um, and and for mom like for mom stepping away like i mean oh well like i get you, you you don't understand why and neither do i and probably none of us but like oh well like you should have just told your son not to do that or you should have been more mm-hmm. involved in his life to realize that what he's doing could really place you in a bad position um and, oh, and i'm sorry i'm privileged I don't. Um, I forgot. I forgot to mention about because um, I don't honestly know because I don't know much about the aromatics and like what happened with mm-hmm. the finding them finding four pair in a warehouse. They were supposed. Mm-hmm. They were like supposedly uncovered. Like oh, look what I yeah, found. That was, kind of thing. That was I don't him. know what that like the was. The Legend of Zelda sound. Legend yeah. of Zelda sound. <laughs> just like. Do, 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 do. Like. <laughs> do do you guys? Any of you guys that know like what that was? Like what that? Because no, I'm saying like in general, what is that? Because I don't know what happened like the story yeah so the story behind that was that uh like sneaker blogs just posted like yo this guy bought a storage unit and inside the storage unit there was four pairs of mags that was the story okay like he just bought a he bought a unit opened the unit there's some mags and the story Mm. um and now they're saying that it was it was him so he never really found them Mm -hmm. Like people are like, you didn't find shit, bro. You probably just came up on those, like you came up on everything else, and that that was just that was just a clout moment for you. Um, yeah, man. But I, I just, I just, I don't, I don't feel bad, um, in any way of the word, in any sense. Like, oh, like, oh, well, is all I could really say to, to both her and both her and him. Mm. Um, and and. It's just overall, like, what I'm really learning or what I'm really getting from this moment is, like, that's crazy. <laughs> that's yeah. so crazy. Like, right mm-hmm. under your nose, right there, the, your VP's son is one of the biggest resellers out there. And mm-hmm. he's and he's using every single, exercising every single connect that he's probably gained and he's mm-hmm. gained through his mom. Mm-hmm. Um And it's just, it's just crazy, man. It, it's so crazy. We, like, we all probably all joked about it stuff like that um and here you go it it, it actually was real this whole time miguel bro I mean, what you thinking uh i'm really not surprised when i saw it um my eyebrows definitely raised for sure but i wasn't really surprised at all i mean if they're in a position like that who wouldn't do that 
Yeah. I know I personally, I mean, I would like to believe that I wouldn't do it, but mm. at the same time, who's to know? You only mm-hmm. know if you're in that position, right? But yeah. um, for me, sneakers really isn't about monetary value. It's about um, the feeling that I get, the nostalgia and everything. So mm-hmm. it's really unfortunate. But um, I feel like somehow, like, I don't want to I'm play devil's advocate. Like, I don't want to say that that's what they were doing because really it's all speculative. Like, we mm-hmm. don't know because we weren't there. Mm-hmm. But yeah. um, I'll definitely say probably his mom was just giving him information. So. Um, how he was coming up on all those shoes. She probably knows about all the allocation of all the stores in North America. Um, and she probably told him, like, yo, this store is going to have this, this store is going to have that. They're going to have this many pairs. Try your best to get X amount. Um, she probably told him like online numbers and everything. So maybe that's how he bought his stuff too. And he probably has like top of the line bots because well, he ran up like a hundred and something thousand on a credit card. Yeah, 200,000. He probably used that. To... Yeah, exactly. So like he probably used all of that to like buy bots and then, um, you know, buy pairs on top of that. So who's to know what he really did? Like, it, it, it's it's unfortunate, really. Um, but I felt like he was making his most money, not even just from those drops, but more or less like if he was using his mom's discount, he would go into the store. He could literally buy shoes at 40, 50 percent off and sell it for retail, maybe mm-hmm. 10, 20 dollar over retail. And the profit margin is still Oh, higher than um, what it would have been if he would have bought them at retail cost, you know. So, dude is making a lot of money, man. That's... Do you think that? Do you like? Does this? Do you think this will change anything in any manner? Like, it'll have an impact um, to like whether the whether Nike um, comes out and speaks publicly on like. On a on a manner like okay, we're this is bigger than just the moment, or this is bigger than the moment because it's affecting uh, the consumer base. Like, do you just think that there's gonna be some type of like um, moment for from Nike to kind of grasp the masses and kind of like you know cut, <laughs> fucking cuddle us through this moment of like, all right, guys, I'm sorry. And then leave us high and dry still. I, I honestly think they have to, because mm-hmm. now, like, because now we're like, because now it's becoming a tally now for us because we've been doing this for you know a year plus now, and how we've had what four or five stories with Nike and it coming to being mm-hmm. some sort of fraud or some some something going on behind the scenes with that company. What uh what a month ago was the guy that uh the guy that was um that was uh frauding that frauded uh nike out of uh two million with the uh, look see samples yeah yeah and oh, so yeah 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 and so it's you have you're starting this now you're starting to kind of just like now tally them down of like okay this is going on this is going on this is still going on this is being worked out right now where you would have to sit there and be like okay you guys have to come out and say something to somebody yeah because yeah. you got one side of your brand where everybody's thinking that the son of the guy that um that owns this company is backdooring you know exclusive shoes and now you have a vp of a company uh come to find out a vp of the company's son is magically finding uh pairs and and storage units and and having these you know towers of shoes on release day Mm -hmm. like that you Mm -hmm. you can't like i know as a person that doesn't like because everybody was trying to do the whole like oh well now that he's off the streets or now that they got him sneakers apps are going to be a little bit easier to hit on it's like that no it doesn't change psych. it doesn't nope. that doesn't psych. change anything psych. It, <laughs> it all it does is now there's somebody that isn't known that can just yeah. now swoop in and do the same exact thing because like like yeah, you said exactly. like, i know personally like i know i think about like what i was doing let's say when i was 19 20 when i was mm-hmm. When you know, when you fresh out of high school, you got a job, so now all your money could go to everything that you've ever wanted. All my money went to shoes, so I was spending mm-hmm. all my money on shoes day and night. Even shoes, I was mm-hmm. getting doubles of shoes, all that stuff. And even for me in that situation, I could I could have turned around and like the homies gonna be like, Yeah, I just I need 300 for that. Like I told you, Gabe, I was selling I was selling shoes for below retail that were going for four or five hundred dollars on on eBay and stuff like that at the time because for me, it was just, yo, the homies, like, I know that they want them, so here, just just take them. But I don't want to be the guy that's like, yo, I need I need 350 for them. Like, no, just whatever retail was for them, just give them to me. I don't care what it is. So I know that 
maybe in that same situation if my mom was in that situation i probably it probably would have just been been able to benefit everybody else like gabe would have been able to mm-hmm. live comfortably man you know just off of the connection like yo mom so i need, uh, I need to get into that alternate universe bro how do i get man, over there bro i like hey yo mom uh so i know what those uh i know what those uh those ones are coming out can can i get can i get four or five pair you know i i need for the for the homies like and would have just did that i don't think i would have started a resale business because I never, even when I first, when I, even when I was into shoes, like, and had the ability to resell, I never wanted to. It was never, that was never the, mm-hmm. the process, the thought process. I think now, mm-hmm. because so many kids are seeing that, seeing that number behind a shoe, it's, they, this, why wouldn't I try to do that? Why wouldn't I try to capitalize off that, off that, that system? And so I think with her, she's doing, she's, she's probably, her hands are probably clean of this, but I don't believe that her hands are clean of this. I feel like mm-hmm. as a son, I know how I talk to my mom. I know if my mom has connections and stuff, I know I can get it out of her. And I know that she's mm-hmm. willing to share that with me. I mm-hmm. honestly believe that she probably had something to do with a, how he's able to get a, what fucking 200 pair of court purple uh, ones. Like, it just, oh, she, it just yeah. chill. Like, was there's no way. There's no way that you're, mm-hmm. that you're like... Like not to say like not to say uh, what you said you know, was wrong, but I don't think that it's just a her saying, you know. So these are where we're putting them. These are where they're going. These are how many stores are getting them. This how many pairs are going. So I think it was more in depth than that, and I think that there was a little bit more to it that we just don't know. Because for somebody mm-hmm. that I don't, I've never seen him before, but I've seen some of these pictures before, and I didn't mm-hmm. know that he always covered his face in all his pictures. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. He's also not the. He's also not the only one. So like, as I was saying, like him having all those shoes might, and he probably had a really easy ability to grab to 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 get those. Um, as I said that, I realized like he's also not the only reseller who has a masses of mount, mass amounts of inventory mm. like that. So, so I think because his mom is the VP, we might be a little bit easier to go that route and say, well, it probably was that easy for him. Yeah. But maybe it wasn't, but maybe it was. Yeah. Because there's a lot, well, a whole bunch of other resellers with that many shoes too. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so, I'm He's sorry. He's definitely uh, not the only reseller. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go gonna ahead. Say, go ahead um, <laughs> yeah. Just he's not the he's probably not the only reseller at that company either, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not gonna throw anybody under the bus, but yo, like I feel like anybody if they have that access to all that stuff, why why wouldn't they? Again, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say I would do it, but you mm-hmm. know, like if the money's enticing, definitely it's like yo, I could I could get X amount of shoe for this amount of price, and people are willing to pay this much. Like, I mean, I wish that there was like a solution that we had for this, but at mm-hmm. the same time, you know, it's it's yeah. it's crazy, man. Like. I, it's hard for me to like, even put it into words, but it's like, wow, like he's really moving that way. But you know, to each his own. I, I would yeah. think that. Oh, go ahead, Gabe. No, you're good. Um, I I would think that with the way the culture is now, I, like you said, I I wouldn't be surprised if there's. Every, uh, a bigger a bigger number of people out there just yo got connections and then his people using that's probably the first of many joe herberts i mean yeah bro and i'm thinking like people if matt like managers can do this on a small scale Mm -hmm. a simple store manager could do this so like Mm -hmm. think about it bro like think about how high that chain like the higher the chain goes all, all it means is the the more pairs you can get, bro. Mm-hmm. That's all it really means. So there, yeah, there has to be a hella resellers within within the the skeleton of Nike. And I've never been lucky enough to go to the employee store. What does what is inside? Is the employee store just everything from a certain from a certain date on, or is it just kind of like a Nike outlet, just bigger? Um, I've never been either. Um, because I've never, I've I'm, never, I'm nobody's ever explained to me like what that looks like inside. Because I've seen only the people coming out of it. I've never, like, I'm of course I know they probably are not letting people take pictures inside of it or whatever. But 
mm-hmm. I don't know like what does the inventory look like? Is it like oh they when you go here they have from January they only have a three month period of shoes in inventory and then stuff that isn't that was all general release plus That's pretty smart or is it yo whatever we have we keep we we make two million uh units of this sh- of this shoe and we keep five hundred thousand of them at the in, at the store and. And so anytime somebody goes until they sell out, they're there. So right now we could go there and they probably still have the ones sitting there. Is that like, like, I always want to know, like, is that how it works or is it just kind of like, that's a good one. That's a good way. I would love to know too. (laughs) Yeah. I don't, I don't, I I would just imagine it as like a, like a super Nike store. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. With just like hella more inventory and just like more, discounts for yeah. the employees i guess i don't i'm not yeah that's a good one i always want to i always want to go i always want to be invited i wonder if they have a sales <laughs> section within the employee discount store hmm. the employee store Oof. but if you wow, that'd be crazy but is it the people that get to go there don't they get the employee discount the visitors that get invited don't they get the employee um, discount going there that's know. always what i believe I, I thought that too but i don't know i don't know i've never really been up there. i've never been there period so um we gotta, I guess we'll be up there. We'll be up there in the in the summertime, bro. And let's uh, yeah. let's apply now and see when we get accepted, and then we'll go up there, bro. Oh, you can apply? Wait, how? What uh, if, <laughs> if I if I would have known we could apply, I would have. Yeah, we we apply. Are we applying for everybody? What are we what are we doing? It's it's it, it, is that what it? I thought that's what it was. Like you got there's like a there's like a. Um, like a, a thingamabobber that you just like, cause you have to get, cause you can get a, you don't have to be gifted a guest pass. It used to be just like that, but I think. Yeah, I have no idea how that works. I want to go to that store though. Yeah, I thought you were only gifted. I thought unless you worked there, like it was, it was a gift thing from that point. That store is like, when you think about it, it's like stuff of legend. You think it's like God tier, the amount of stuff that they have, but. Okay. I don't know. I would so love I just, to go, I just, though. I just did a quick look. So I'm, I'm, I'm. This is an article that I found uh, from September of last year. Uh-huh. The Nike employee store: How to get in and what to expect. This past September, um, let me see who wrote this article. I'm sorry. Let me get his name first before. Uh, it doesn't say. Pretty sure it's at the bottom, but whatever. Uh, this is on travel, travel. Oh, travel with, with Ellie. Oh, so I can start blog. Okay, so Ellie. So travel uh, Ellie.com. This is um her her uh article about the Experience. employee store. Yeah. yeah. So this past September I had the pleasure of visiting the Nike employee store for the first time ever. What did it what is the Nike employee store you ask? Well, basically it's a normal Nike store on steroids. You can expect a large variety of current and past season products, and everything can be purchased for a fraction of the retail price. You'll get to shop the best Nike products at employee pricing, which equates to 40 to 50% off your entire purchase. That's a huge discount. That's enough to entice you. Everything you buy is tax-free at the Beaverton, Oregon, Oregon location. True, Oregon. Lucky for us, my boyfriend scored two passes for us to visit last month. And let me, let me tell you, it was quite the experience from the moment we stepped inside the front doors. In this post, I would, I'll dive into the entire store shopping process, give you a, a taste of what to expect at the store, and show you what we scored on our shopping trip. Okay, so I don't want to read this whole thing because I don't want to, but I'll because the next one is how to get into a Nike employee store. Before you jump into your car and head over to your uh, closest Nike employee store, there are a few things you need to know. There are there are actually only two Nike company stores in the United States. There's the mm-hmm. Beaverton, Oregon, and the Memphis, Tennessee uh, location. There's also a pretty significant barrier to entry to uh barrier to entry for those of you who don't know getting into the nike employee store is like getting into an exclusive nightclub an invitation is hard to come by the bottom line is you'll have to be granted access by somebody who works for the night for nike or is affiliated with nike oh, okay. if you are employed by nike or any of its brands converse or hurley hurley that's how you said right yeah uh you can access the store in an unlimited number of times by simply showing your work ID. 
Full-time employees are also able to add significant others and immediate family members to the entry list for unlimited visits. Sheesh. However, you can down, however, you don't fall into the category, there's still be hope for you. If you know someone who works for Nike, you may be lucky, may, may be in luck. Each year, Nike gives its employees a set of amount of extra passes to give away to their friends and acquaintances. To gain access to a Nike company uh, store, all you need to do is ask your Nike employed friend to add you to the list. Don't know any, don't know a Nike employee? Ask a few of your friends to see if they know somebody who knows somebody. Uh, okay, a few weeks ago. Hey, I know a couple of people. You do? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, other ways to get into a Nike employee store, if you don't currently know an em- Nike employee, something else you could do is befriend a Nike employee. Obviously, you want to do yeah. you want to do so for them this friends itself. This article, this article could kick rocks, bro. Bro, uh, yo, <laughs> tell me something I don't know. Article. So then she then she breaks down uh, what to expect in a Nike store. Yeah. yeah. Um. Damn. Yeah. They- they just got everything. Oh, oh, so you can't take pictures in there. So she has pictures of the store. It looks literally just like a Nike outlet. Just mm-hmm. and everything is fully stocked and clean. It's probably Jesus. like medium, like I don't want to say low heat, but like medium to semi high heat, probably. Yeah, they, like I'm not saying anything like, crazy. Like if I had to think right now, what they probably have there. I'm going to say they have Silver Sneak Air Force Ones. And I'm not saying that, like, I'm certain, but, like, I would have guessed I think that they, they have would have 40% like, off because that those are slept on. Yeah. They probably, probably have, have, like, uh, Cool Gray 3s. Yeah. Cool Gray 3s because uh, they're still sitting in some stores out here, so I'm sure that they have mm-hmm. them there. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But things like that, you know? Like, really, like, pro- high-produced GRs or, like, mm-hmm. Like semi to hot, semi to low heat, yeah. basically that they will have, and then like your your basic your basic regular GRs, like a whole bunch of two seventies, like whole bunch of running shoes, whole bunch of running clothing, at forty percent off, pretty much. Jeez, uh, so it's like a uh, going to a, it's like going to a uh, an outlet, but with current items. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And then you might have your one or two, like yo, like they have like the latest drop or whatever, but. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Yeah, so she says the Nike company store is pretty big. It, it's essentially the size of a super spacious warehouse or airplane hangar. Prioritize what you're looking for and hit up sections. Hit up sections in the order of your highest priority in items. Uh, she says it's frowned upon to, to wear competitors' brands in the, in the store. Um, I can imagine. Uh, bring water and snacks, especially if you think you're going to be shopping for a few hours. Shopping takes a lot of energy. Seriously, after three and a half hours of shopping with no water, after all, we were dying of thirst. Uh, <laughs> yo, yo, at least bugging. Uh, <laughs> do you remember, right? uh, during, during our visit, <laughs> during our visit, there was a limit of thirty items or three thousand dollars spend, whichever you hit first. This may be subject to change. Um, just run it on the card, bro. Sheesh. Fuck it. She said, "Yo, swipe it." Yeah, just keep swiping, bro. You can return merchandise to the Nike time. store. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, so I need to, yeah, I need to find are. a you, Nike you, or a Nike employee. You feeling like, good over there? Lollygagging over there, Chris? I'm trying to see what's up. I'm trying. To, yo, hey. Uh, so is it like any any level Nike employee, right? As long as you uh, work for Nike. She said full time employees and. Hmm. Sorry, I'm gonna ask around. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna. I'm just, bro. Uh, there's no way Nika's using these, bro. She's in Miami, bro. She ain't I just going realized that Nike. I mean, yeah, Nika. What we doing? <laughs> Let me text her. I'm going to Come hey. on. You just realized it, bro? I you better hope she don't hear this it. video, this episode. Can I, I, I want to call her. Sick. You better, you better, you better fucking edit that out. Be like, yo, what we doing? I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to see what she doing. I'm about to call her. She about to, she about to make a guest appearance. We're going to have to figure this out. Bro, it's not um, that kind of, yo. it's not that kind of. 
Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I, ho- I hope it works out. I hope she answers if you really um, do call. You're crazy. So, okay, so back to this whole Nike situation. Um, and so yeah, then, yeah. Uh, so one other piece that I want to add, um, Gabe, you had, you had, uh, you had sent me, um, was it a screenshot right. or I think it was, uh, you were telling me that perfect pair, the perfect pair was getting blasted on in the comments. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. in the comments of somebody talking about the story, uh, he, uh, he basically put, I think <clears> it was like, we don't up. care or something like that. Or, um, oh, sure um oh, yeah, who it? cares? <laughs> That's what he put. He put. He said, who cares? He said, and, "Who cares?" But what was what was the caption though? Uh, remember when someone found, uh, oh, quote yeah. unquote, found six pairs of Nike mags in the store's locker last year? Turns out it was Joe Herbert. Uh, and then he puts, "Who cares?" And they just start. <laughs> so to lead off, uh, hey, fuck you, going Kenny. Off on him? Bro, yeah, uh, there was a there was a hundred and there was a hundred replies to his comment. Jeez. Yeah. yeah, dumb question. Uh, broke niggas like me <laughs> cause you don't got wait. Broke niggas. Oh, he because he says who cares, and so they reply, broke niggas like me, cause you don't gotta care about shoe prices, you know. Yeah. And so if anybody that doesn't wow. know, uh, the perfect pair he is a well-off uh, guy in life. Uh, he has a crazy collection um, and is just doing well. And so a lot of people felt, you know, based off of his tax bracket and, you know, the connections he does have in the sneaker community, it kind of, mm-hmm. beca- it was kind of like a, a slap in the face, really. So I think. To some oh, people. and that, and, and that kind of goes into like our clubhouse conversation mm-hmm. that like, we didn't we didn't even highlight into um into our breakdown for the episode. Do you remember that one when we were both in there last week? Um damn, I don't uh, I remember you sent to me. I don't remember what was in it. What was it? It was about? uh a lot of them were talking about like uh a brands and and community based the topic when we came in was community. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um they were talking, yeah, they were talking about uh brands and so they were talking about uh so basically when I came in, the gist of what they were talking about was um people would come in and they would ask people, yo, what does like how can we basically touch the the community? Like how can we relate to community? It's like that. And it was never it was kind of more of just trying to squeeze them for information and then just all right, we're good off of you not having people in those actual seats that make those decisions to say, yo, it was just a either cash grab or just to make it seem like they're part of the struggle in the situation, in, in, in different like a situations. focus group. Yeah, b- basically. And so it's like, Hey, yeah, we'll give you lunch, but can you tell us how, how does it, how does, what's, what's life like in Baltimore? <laughs> like God, it's like, it's, it's, it was stupid. Um, But I don't know, Gabe, you were in there longer than me. So, um if you you want um, to give out a more they, they 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 just kind of um they they obviously went at like uh on a on a company level like like nike and adidas and all them um they they brought in um for locker i think it was for locker has like community community stores that uh provide uh mm-hmm, they do. service services outside of just coming in and buying shoes um so everyone was really using that as a good example as to like what what other places and people can do with their with their platform, um, and there was an interesting one where uh, someone said that like athletes are the same way. Like athletes, um, you know, they have a summer camp, basketball camp. It's their camp, but they're physically only there for a day, half mm-hmm. a day, and then they're out. Um, Those are assistants and friends that they could get to be there and all that shit. And, and and I was like, dude, this is it's the same thing with within the sneaker culture and anyone who has a platform within that as well. Mm-hmm. And that same day that we had the conversation is when uh, the perfect pair posted and he said, who cares? And everyone mm-hmm. was saying all this stuff. Yeah. And that's why I told Chris, I was like, this is an example of what they were saying in Clubhouse of yeah. like, he's just he's adding fuel to the wrong fire. Yeah. Um, and it's not even like adding fuel to a fire because it, it's not like at that time the conversation or the focus is so major at, 
it, it had already kind of the dust had kind of settled already by then. Mm. Um, but yeah, but, it's just, but it, it's just you gotta remember at the same time when you sent that it was still during people were expecting like sneakers app to be clear like oh yeah okay, now we can kind of clear some of these bots out the way now I can possibly get these mm-hmm. ones and so mm-hmm. I think it was right in the middle of the week so it wasn't it was like yeah the desk was kind of selling but it was still like people were still feeling you know some type of way like they were feeling some type of hope at that point and and um I just I just really wanted to kind of bring that into the into the conversation mm. um I didn't know how to fit it in in this conversation exactly but I wanted to come and bring it onto the podcast in general because um that is true bro. like like the example you were giving Chris mm. and the one that they gave like there's a huge disconnect um and it's only it's only uh, assessed when they want to do it on a, on a one-off top type of event mm-hmm. or or there's never real like um investment into these projects to make them uh you know grow and grow with the youth that choose to partake in those projects mm-hmm. um and, and and i feel like it's even crazier because when i started thinking about that 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 topic and and people within uh the sacred community who do have a voice in whether whether small or big no one there there isn't really anyone advocating like for what could be done differently um or or how this is just capitalism running wild instead of instead of it being like a like um just just something that that has uh like genuine interest and stuff like that it is a weird conversation for me to kind of word but it's just something that i just started looking at and observing like they're, they're yeah we're just you we're, know what's the sad we're, part that i think about ahead, like um as much as we love sneakers we're a really like niche community even though like mm-hmm. it's expanded now more than ever like you know because you guys been in there before me but I feel like it's grown now more than ever, but you know, like there's still like a practicality to it because like the average American definitely probably gonna have like what, like 10 shoes at most. Mm -hmm. So they probably don't Mm -hmm. even go shoe shopping that much. So like Nike, I feel like they care about us, but they don't care about us to the extent that we would like them to care about us or these Mm -hmm. brands in general. Because at the end of the day, the a consumer probably really isn't gonna justify spending $150 on a pair of shoes. They're probably like, yo, fuck it. I'm gonna wait till it goes on sale and get it for 100 maybe 80 and mm-hmm. i could rack out on like two three four pair and save me trips to the store so mm-hmm. they that that's what marketing comes in they're going to try to convince you to buy more shoes so um i think that you know i would love i mean i, I would speak for all of us when they say that we would love if they paid more attention to us but at the same time it's that practicality like there's probably like and no shout, no like, no shots to like Wyoming or anything, but there's probably like a random family in Wyoming that they go to like their local Nike outlet, they buy like four or five pairs of shoes at once, and then they mm-hmm. probably are done for like the next three four months. Like mm-hmm. they're not mm-hmm. buying out of like um, aesthetics or anything like that. Maybe that plays a factor, but at the end of the day, they're looking for function. So, uh, like I'm saying, like it's, it's all about that practicality. Mm-hmm. Nah, no, you're right. Oh, go ahead, Chris. I, no, no, you're good. Um, I was I was thinking just because I was thinking about that, and I like what you were saying. Like, I don't think, yeah, they they because we 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 are lucky enough to be on you know what the three major markets for brands, mm-hmm. which is LA, mm-hmm. Miami, and New York, and those are where they'll focus a lot of their you know events and you know releases and stuff like that, unless it's something that's specific to a certain city and stuff like that. Um, but we're, you know, we're lucky enough to be in those major markets. So of course we have a, um, we have a, uh, we have a ability to have more, um, more options when it comes to releases mm-hmm. and having the ability mm-hmm. to say, okay, well, if this doesn't happen, I can still get this, or if this doesn't happen, I can get this. Whereas a lot of those other places don't have that ability. And I think, um, Nike is at one of those is Nike and if not other brands are at the at this point where p- 
people are starting to speak out more and a lot of people are starting to have platforms like this. And there are people that have this same feeling that don't have 80 subscribers. They have, you know, 200, 300,000 subscribers that will, will mimic everything they're saying in their podcast or their, their show or whatever to Nike in the Reddit boards and on their, you know, comment, uh, comment boards and all that stuff to where I think Nike has kind of started to try to tune things out so that they don't have to deal with us. And I feel like it would be better if they did and just said, hey, you guys are the ones that are making these events what they are. Like mm-hmm. the, the sneaker community, like if we're being 100% real, yeah, they're, you know, they have plenty of events that are, you know, tethered outside of like us who are just in it for the shoes and like enjoy the, you know, enjoy the, 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 the culture itself. But most of these events are because we are out here trying to get those shoes. We're lining up, camping out, trying to get all those shoes, and they're they can see they see their their stock prices go up because we're you know every single shoe selling out within ten minutes. You know everybody downloading their app and everybody you know all that traffic that they're getting on their um, websites like that. We're the ones doing that for them, and they're sitting and they still sit back and just treat us like, and we we'd still be you know, a billion dollar company without you guys. And it's like, I don't think that that's the case. I don't think that without us, you guys meet, a, your guys aren't sitting at a billion dollars. You guys would, of course, get mm-hmm. there because you guys are Nike, you're Adidas. We know, like, there's so many other things that they're tapped into that, of course, they're going to get there no matter what. But I don't think that they function as smoothly and as rapidly without us. And I think we're starting to get to that point where people are just kind of being fed up of not being heard and saying, okay, Yo, Mm -hmm. what's going on with your app? No response. Yo, what's going on Mm -hmm. with, you know, with you uh, employee having a son that's reselling, you know, hundreds of shoes on release day? No Mm -hmm. response. What's going on with, um, yeah, you know, like what's going, what's going on with, you know, stores possibly backdooring shoes? No response. And it's like, okay, yo, well, are you guys ever going to listen to us? And, you know, it sucks because we're not, we're never at a point where we could say, all right, let's boycott Nike or let's boycott Adidas because that's what everybody tries to jump to. Well, oh, don't buy their products. And if you're so, it's like that, that hurts us who are into shoes because if the people that really love the shoes stop buying the shoes, all it's going to be now at that point is just going to be a free for all for all the resellers and and bots out there that are, you know, collecting shoes. And mm-hmm. instead of us being able, like Jeremy, get being able to hit on the shark room for whatever, whatever it was 190 or 200 retail. And being able to hit and just be that one person that I know that's, you know, lucky enough to hit and, you know, be happy that Mm -hmm. he hit. Mm -hmm. And just for that one moment, us being happy to have that to the point where now none of us are hitting because we all decided to boycott. Now, instead of paying $200, maybe once out of the month or possibly, you know, hitting on a shoe that we really want. Like if I hit on the fours, I'm happy for the year. If I hit on these, on these, uh, these, uh, these UNC fours, I'm happy. If I don't, Mm -hmm. You know, it is what it is. I'm gonna contemplate buying a uh, resale, but I don't want to. Mm-hmm. But if we, if I boycott and just say I'm done with Nike, I'm done with Adidas, I'm done with with uh, with everybody that I don't like the way that they, um, because I don't feel heard, then now I'm definitely gonna be like, okay, well now I definitely have to pay four or five hundred dollars yeah. for for a shoe, and it's like so that's not boycotting is not the answer. Not wearing the shoes is not the answer because. What other options do we have besides being, you know, invested in these brands, just saying, yo, we don't want you guys to like, you know, bow down to us and say, yo, you know, we're sorry for, you know, forsaking you guys We're you know, we'll obey your guys every command because you can't do that as a company. You can't bend, bend over for every time we have a complaint because there are people out there complaining about everything, every little Mm -hmm. thing. Oh, I don't like the way that the checkout happens. I don't like the way that this Nike employee talked to me at the outlet. I want everybody fired and I want a uh, 200% discount on my next five. Like there's all those, there's those extremes, but we want to at least be like, yo, we know we, I, we would at least want to know that you hear us at least like, yo, okay. We exactly. know what's going on with the app. We're sorry. Shit. Shit. Lie to me. Honestly, yo, we're working on it. <laughs> okay, cool. Like I could, I could go back to, I can come back here and, and yo, Nike said they're working on it. All right, guys, just hold <laughs> out. Like everybody, hold out. We're almost there. Kind of thing. I don't care if you lie to me. It's like that, but just make it seem like, like at least let me know that I my message got to you. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, that's my thing. yeah. But yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go on this long thing. But yeah, that's how I feel. 
No, I think that's how kind of everyone feels, bro. Like, like you said, even if they lie to us, just just acknowledging um, what is being thrown your way mm. and what you're being constantly dragged down for, like, just acknowledge it, bro. Acknowledge it's... it, and we're going to continue on getting our L's, and <laughs> it'll be fine. Yeah, like we That's like all I want, bro. we are we are we are we are we are turned on by the the abuse that you guys give us, Nike and Adidas, and all. Oh those. no, no, we're, we're not. No, we're, we're not. No, we're we, not. We, we come back no, to it every not. week. No. Every week we come back to it. We come no. back every week to just get abused I could, by Nike. Just just because I come back to it, bro. We have a fetish that. for the abuse that they give us. No, uh, no, we don't. No, <laughs> we, we do. <laughs> we don't. If, if, we're, if we're being real, we do. We we know that we're probably going to nine times it's like we know they're going to did not deny us half the time but that but it, it's not i don't it's that man i refuse to wear to use these words fetishes and turned on uh what is it turned on bro i'm good i'm not using those I, I, words I, I, man. i'll use yo, it for myself uh, then. yo gabe i agree with you bro i'll, <laughs> use, I'll use it for myself then yo we have I don't know what the exact terminology for it is, but we are we uh-huh. we look for we look forward to be, having Nike abuse us every week on that app every week. That's no. sorry, bro. You're I, gratified no. off the L, I guess. I don't know. Eh, yeah. I don't know, bro. What's I think it's like a pageantry for? for it because you know we get to go into the you know the comments and you know yeah we got our L two. Did anybody else win? <laughs> kind of thing. You know? Oh man, it's like a and camaraderie. All, it's like a camaraderie yeah. We all sit there with our broken heart, like. Else. So how how did you catch your L? Oh yeah, you know I woke up late. <laughs> all you guys, all you got, all you guys listening to take care and stuff. Yeah, you know, Ro- roasting marshmallows. Exactly. It's just like the it's just like the uh the the uh the scene in uh in Endgame, <laughs> just yeah. Endgame where they have Which the little one? uh they have the little uh support group for after the after the snap. Oh, true. After and he's blip. like, yeah, you know, Damn. so we had yeah. we had a we went to dinner and you know we got we almost we didn't even get through avatars before we you know were both crying at the table <laughs> like that's where <laughs> we're at now. Like yeah, we that's you, you know, bro. I you know I, I don't got, cry, I bro. I don't day. cry. I had a great Saturday. You know everything was good, and then. You know, went to the store and it was, was like good. What sold out. <laughs> the L, the L's at seven a.m. I'm, yeah. I'm still in bed. I don't even get out of bed, bro. I literally just, oh, I lost her. I yes. sleep, bro. That's it. Yo, but <laughs> see, how can you like? <laughs> it's just you, you're routine. so conditioned to it. You've been, you're able to sleep with a broken heart, bro. I literally I just feel back through West I, Coast guys, man. <laughs> oh, because we got to go back to sleep with our L's, and you just yeah. go on with your day. I'm just up. I'm, I'm I just working. Working. I, I keep forgetting, yo. It's ten o'clock when that happens for them, right? Oh, you guys, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you guys yeah. are. You guys already have breakfast, you know. See, seven o- by seven working. o by seven o five. I'm already dead back asleep. Yeah, because I already know. Especially if it's like if it's like seven o three, and I still haven't it still hasn't told me that I didn't get them. I just go back to sleep because I know when I wake up, it's gonna say you didn't get them. So it don't I would. Even I would want, see. Like for me, like now, it, like. Is that what is better? Is it better to catch like is it better to just be at 10 o'clock to be like, all right, I'm gonna try to get these shoes at 10. None of us want to lose, Chris. It's not better. No one well, no, I'm saying like lose. for like for my day. Like, would it be better for me yeah. to just catch the L at seven or would it be better for me to catch the L at 10 when I've already started my day? Like I got dressed, I took a great shower, I feel good. I mean, I, and then it's the same. It's I think it's at thing. 10. At 10. At 10 is better. You know why? Because hypothetically you could like i'm thinking about it as you were saying it i'm like yo i could game plan i could give i could think i'm giving myself a chance like yo if i do this this and this i might be able to get the shoe you know what i'm saying maybe if i put my phone on airplane mode maybe mm-hmm. if i watch a couple videos real quick maybe if i log in the log back out the log back in the app maybe See. if i create a new account real quick you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying like you have like mm-hmm. you have like that buffer like if you wake up at nine you got like a good thirty minutes to do what you got to do. So yeah, seven. Me, I'm, yeah, I'm still I wake up pillow. at five. So like, I'm still work. Like during the weekends, I'm working, right? So I wake up at five to be at work at seven, and then like usually like during my shift, there'll be like um a drop or whatever. And if mm. I could try, like I'm at work already, so I'm already up. Like I got my phone on me. I could try to do what I got to do, and yeah. if I get it, I get them. If I don't, yeah. you know, I feel like. People lose and they forget sometimes that, yo, if you do the proper footwork, nine times out of ten, well, not nine times out of ten, I'd say like 
five or six, maybe four, <laughs> depending on the release. Like you might be able to get a shoe in the mm-hmm. store, mm-hmm. but you just got to be able to go and look. And you have to like keep in mind like, yo, maybe if I check there, maybe if I check here, but you got to do the footwork though. Like you got to be outside at 10 o'clock and be around these stores in order to see if anything happens. But, oh, yeah, because ask... really, I'll tell you a story. So like, oh, yeah, I tried to get the Valentine Air Force Ones when they came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I tried yeah, I tried to get the Valentine's Air Force Ones when they came out. And um, I tried on sneakers. I lost. And I'm like, all right, cool. Luckily, I got out at work at 11. So I mm. went downtown. I went to Extra Butter. There was no line. They did first come, first serve. And I got a nine and a half. And then I traded yeah. it for some Griffins. So yeah. I traded them for my grill. So, you know, if you just walk outside and look for what you want. I mean, that was just one instance. But sometimes, depending on release, you might be all right. I want, I want to ask you. So take people that don't know New York because everybody says like there was this uh, there's this conversation that was happening on Twitter like a year ago or two years ago where somebody was like um, in New York if you leave the house by seven you probably won't be back in the house by two o'clock the next day in the morning because they were basically a city way like, uh, uh, like, you know, 2 a.m. yeah like two like they were saying like, they're basically like making a conversation like there's so much to do in New York, that once you step outside, you could get roped into a bunch of different activities to the point where you end up mm-hmm. you end up not coming home till the next morning because you've been outside doing everything and anything, and now you're back. And so I'm, I think it was more towards like you know uh, like people that are visiting. I don't know like how it is for people that live there, but I, I, that was always my vision. City? Yeah, that was always my vision of New York, where it's like I go outside and there's like. Uh, a flea market going on down the street and then there's a rooftop party you know going on and there's a brunch and now now I go get drinks with friends at at five o'clock and now we're at some club you know club hopping till three o'clock in the morning and then I get back and I realize what what I wore when I left the house is the same thing I'm covered over it because I didn't get a chance to go home and change for anything and so I, 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 I definitely agree like I worked um, I don't know if you guys have been in New York, but there's an area called like uh, Union Square. So I worked there. I was working at a Vans at one point and my cousin was working at a Zoomies. When we would get out of our shifts, literally in that park, there was always something going on all the time. Mm-hmm. So we literally would like get out at seven and we wouldn't get home to like 11, 12, maybe one in the morning. Cause like you said, like there's always something going on. Like they had like farmer's markets. They have like street vendors. Like, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, and then on top of that, if you have a really good, good circle like living in the city but i feel like this could probably be for any city depending like if you live in any metropolitan area like if you have like good friends there's definitely going to be something going on all the time so you're going to get that text like yo where you at oh we're doing this that and the third pull up like you know what i'm saying so yeah you never know well yeah so i'm I'm sorry i didn't i went totally left of what i was going to ask um, what is it like for That's somebody? What you do, Chris? I know always on. Uh, what is it like for <laughs> for like for you like on a sneaker release? Like, um, because you kind of gave like a breakdown. You know, you could plan out your day of like okay, I can hit these different spots like that. What like how much traveling does it take for you to be able to say okay? Because like I'm I'm pretty sure you have like your kind of like your four or five places that you'll hit if you need to go. Like if if there's any if all else fails, I got to go here kind of thing how much traveling in a day would it take you to hit all those places? Like, let's say you're like, okay, this is the shoe I need to get. Absolutely got to have. And okay. I didn't hit on the app. So got my wallet. I'm ready to walk out the door. How much traveling do you have to do in a day to say, okay, you got to hit all these different places just to make sure and see if you can at least, you know, come up with something. Hmm, That's a good question. I feel like, so I'm going to travel across one entire borough. So there's a borough called Manhattan. Like, mm-hmm. So all of Manhattan, I'm traveling. So let's say I'm going to use the, um, let's say these DQMs that are coming out, right? Mm-hmm. I need those. I know I need those. I need mm-hmm. two pairs. So let's say for the sake of our conversation, I don't hit on sneakers. I'm going to a Foot Locker uptown. I'm going to check Atmos in Harlem. I'm going to check extra butter downtown. I'm going to check um, Nike Soho. I'm checking Nike on Fifth Avenue. Um, I'm checking, I'm checking Kith. I'm checking, like, if they, that's if these stores didn't do raffles. Like, mm-hmm. if they did first come, first serve. Um, I'm checking Kith. Um, I feel like I'm missing other stores too, but like, 
Um, I feel like I spend my whole day literally like I can't give you like a finite amount of time, but I, mm. I would say like, I don't know, maybe like a good like five or six hours. Like I'd spend my whole day searching literally for that shoe if I didn't hit on sneakers. So my whole day I'd, I'd be on the subway. Like I would say like a good third of my day would be literally just on the train. Oh, and then the other two thirds would be like outside walking, going to these That's stores, work. asking like, yo, did you guys get these? If not, did you release them through a raffle? Like, you know what I'm saying? I would have done my raffle work beforehand, but mm -hmm. I'd go up to these, like, uh, employees. I'd be like, yo, like, is there any possibility? Like, yo, can I come pick up leftovers if they didn't come pick up their pears? Like, you know, mm -hmm. like, got to do my mm -hmm. regular, like, uh, um, roundabout. So let's see what happens, man. Like, for real, for real. Like, if that that's mm -hmm. what I'm going to do. Like, if they don't do raffles for these bacons, I'm definitely going to do that. So <laughs> bacons are hard. I need, those bacons. I need those. I need I'm looking need at those. the map of New York right now and looking at the boroughs. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there mm -hmm. like, I think I would fall asleep halfway through. Like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to sleep. Uh, I'm I'm good. Really? Yeah. You're not a traveling man, bro? Like, I'm a traveling man, but like, you guys, you, you said you mostly have to use the subway because it's not like something that you could just like hop in a car mm -hmm. and just do all day. Yeah. Like, yeah. would you, you prefer? You could, but good luck with traffic. Oh, uh, yeah. See, yeah. I'd probably just be like, you know what? I'm about to go hit my favorite food spot and then just go home. Cause I'm looking, yeah, so, cause I'm looking at now. like Manhattan is huge. And then you said it's Soho. Long, really long. That's a, that's what she said though. Yeah. Oh, well, Soho. Say. Soho in and of itself. So Soho, yeah. Soho means south of Houston Street. So Soho within and of itself. I'm going to Kith. I'm going to Extra Butter. Um, if you're willing to pay resale, you go to Round Two. You could go to Laced Up. Mm -hmm. Um, you could go to Soul Stage. Like. That's if you're willing to pay resale. You would have sold stage, you would have laced up, and you would have um, surround two. But if you're trying to get it for retail and they mm -hmm. didn't do mm -hmm. um, a raffle, which I doubt because they definitely did, you're going to, mm -hmm. um, well, except Nike because Nike, they like to do a lot of first come, first serve. Um, but they'll do that. That's they do it randomly. But like um, the day of, I'm going to kiss and I'm going to extra butter if they didn't do raffles. But if I'm willing to pay resale and people already sold their pairs to those stores, I'm going mm -hmm. to lace up. I'm going to Soul Stage, and I'm going to, um, to to round two. But if you got money, you go to Flight Club on 14th. That's on um, that's by Union Square. That's where I used to work at. My Flight Club wasn't that far from the vans that I worked at. But yeah, if you got money, you're going over there too. So I don't, I don't mm -hmm. like. Flight you gotta have because... a pretty penny, or or I was gonna you say don't like Flight Club because so of what? Just wait. Yeah, oh no, I was saying I don't like Flight Club because the employees always made me feel self conscious when I walked in there. I don't know. I don't know. Why? <laughs> Yo. I don't, like, they always seem I'll like come. assholes. Like, I didn't, like, I always ask them for, like, I would ask them and then they would, like, they would, I would ask them, like, Yo, can I see something? And then they would act like mm -hmm. it was like a chore to, like, go look. Mm -hmm. And like, mm -hmm. I get it. Like, yo, you got, you know, thousands of people coming in daily, you know, just window shopping. It's like that. I get it. But like I was in mm -hmm. like I was only going to fight when I was going to fight club, it was because I was looking for something specific. And so if I was asking, it yeah. was like, you know, I'm trying to get it. And I bought from there mm -hmm. multiple times. So it wasn't like they didn't recognize my face, but it was like at the same time, like even if you don't like, you know, make it like you you work at Flight Club, you know, have a little pep in your step, you know. Like, don't don't just, step. Yeah, you know, look like you making look at you making demands, bro. I'm, hey, I'm sorry. It just made Facts. me feel like it, it was it was Flight Club and uh, Diamond. Like they always made me feel self conscious walking there because I always felt like I was not part of the cool crowd going in there. Like it just felt like. Oh, I'm gonna say one more cool, store. Um, oh, go ahead. What I was I was gonna say the one more store you could go to Stadium Goods. I forgot. Stadium Goods. Stadium Goods. Yeah, same. Mm -hmm. I, um, I I I bought a pair from Stadium Goods before. Stadium Goods is cool. I still I didn't, get. It. I didn't. I didn't directly buy from them though. Someone I bought from bought from them, so yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. See. Sorry about that. What's uh, up, Chris? No, no shots. Leave no shots at New York one, Flight Club employees. I don't know. I don't know y'all out there, so y'all might be all cool. <laughs> y'all are probably cool as fuck. But I'm just, the LA. Mm, I'm not feeling it. Uh, let's see. Let's jump. Yeah, LA, LA is a little pretentious, you know. They're see, on Melrose, see, you, so, know. you know. They they think they're elitist. See. See, you know? But you see how you looked at me when I said that though, as if I was like saying something wrong. If you go yeah. on Melrose, Melrose makes you feel like you're that, not part of the in crowd, no matter yeah, what. Even though no one on Melrose is on the, is in the exactly. in crowd, exactly. Like, 
Yeah. Like, like you're you're leeching off the homie that knows a homie that works there. Like you guys are just sitting outside like losers anyway. Like the fuck. Yeah. But it's like it yeah. always when I, like the only place on on Mel was that ever like I always like was hundreds because all the people in there were cool mm-hmm. shit. Everybody in there that works. Mm-hmm. So shout out to hundreds, shout out to Bobby Hundreds, all them. They were always cool as hell in there. But Flight Club, uh Absolutely. Diamond Supply, uh actually not Pink Dolphin, they were cool. When they were there, I never been. I didn't remember them being there. Yeah, they were, they were uh, there. Supreme Style Melrose. Oh, I never went in there. <laughs> I never went in there. <laughs> he never said, never "Look at why not, nah, dude?" Yeah. I, that was just too. That was like I don't like much. I don't like stuff from Supreme in the first place. Like 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 that in the first. Like it's just not my not my thing. Same. Mm-hmm. But it was also like nah. Like I don't. I don't like. I saw. I I would pass and I would see what it, I was like. Oh. Like just my anxiety just went through the roof because I was just like, nah, I can't do that. Because like everybody that like, was anybody I was I can't always afford in there. that shirt. Yeah, I'm out of nah, here. Nah. 150 for a shirty. Nah, Hall of Fame, though. No. I was always in there with their upside down. Oh leg. yeah. Man, okay. Are they still there? I don't know if they're still there. I don't think so. I loved Hall of Fame. They were dope. You ever go to Brooklyn Project? Oh BP. Yeah, I've yeah. been to BP. Yeah, that was the the one of my last Black Friday adventures was at Brooklyn Projects. Brooklyn Projects. And um, I bought high. a I bought a couple kicks from them. Um, and it's crazy because some of the shoes I remember the shoes that I bought that day. Mm. Um, I have mm. I don't have those. I have the highs, bro. I've always wanted those, the Brooklyn Project lows. Yeah, I got the highs. Don't don't make me do it don't to him, bro. Don't make me do it to him, man. I'm looking at the box right you try there. To, you trying to find it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think but, um, I think I've been there. Whatever. I think I have. Brooklyn no, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Brooklyn Projects is across the street. Okay, so you do you know where Round Two is now? Yeah. Okay, so Brooklyn Projects is literally across the street. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, then no, I've seen it, but I've never been in. Yeah. Okay. Um. It's a dope store, man. They had they used to have hella dope uh, Black Friday deals, but I'm glad they don't anymore because I can only imagine the lines that there would be yeah. for people trying to buy SBs at Brooklyn Projects. Um, but dude, I bought SBs there for like 20, 30 bucks. Um, I doubled up on De La Soul Lowe's and those are like four hundred dollars now, which is crazy. Mm. Yeah, Jeez. yeah, I bought them there for like twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I've ever. I never. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, that I don't think I've ever got crazy. shoes off of wow. Melrose. I think really? only Flight Club was like the only place I ever got like shoes, but it was like nothing like, like it was always just stuff I wanted. Like it was like I I got my Altitude Thirteens from there. Um, what does I get that? I think I, I think I got my cool. You buy shoes, there, Chris. Too. You know. <laughs> You know, <laughs> just, just a couple times, you know. Like, hey, I, hey, I, I put out, I put out the ones, I put out the ones. Hey, this I seen it, bro. I, I seen it, bro. I was like, know? bro, who is this guy? You know, that guy I, is trying I, to get on the podcast. Yeah, I, I just try, <laughs> try to everybody <laughs> ask, try to give, try to get my, my, uh, my, my pass to be able to be able to do this his, podcast. His, every week. His airtime, bro. It's airtime. Man, I, I tried. I, I, I was gonna wear, um, I was gonna do my, uh, my, my thirteens, uh, Lucky Green thirteens, but. It was just for the fit. I was like, nah, that's too like it was too much green going on. That's a good shoe. Yeah, I love that. The shoe. lucky green thirteens. Yeah, that shoe was beautiful. Yeah, I like that shoe. It's beautiful. But I'm I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to wear it uh, at some point this week. Um, what was that on the next one? Oh, anyways, yeah. What uh, so uh, next on the list, uh, I feel like this show is never complete unless we talk about Travis Scott. But now we have a mm-hmm. reason to talk about Travis Scott. Uh, we got images of the British khaki Travis Scott six uh, sixes. I almost said sixteens. Uh, sixes that are coming out. Um, did everybody get a chance to take a look at these? I uh, think those. I think I'm looking at them right now. What, uh, what are y'all thoughts? Ooh. Give me, give me down. Let's uh, resident uh, Travis Scott fan right here. Uh, Gabe, what you, what you thinking? Oh, oh, um, pressure's on. I mean, I, I like, I like a lot of things. I like all things Travis Scott. Mm-hmm. Um. Where where does it fall on my on my list? It's towards it's towards the bottom for sure. Oh yeah. Um yeah. I, I mean the, the colorway is cool. Um the materials are dope. I mm. like the switch up from the green pair to this pair. Mm. Um, but I definitely like the green pair a lot more. 
And because I like it a lot more, it makes me like this one less. Mm, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Does that makes sense? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. But I definitely see the market for these like being low. Because mm. I don't know if y'all remember, but the Travis Scott 4s used to be like $400 or like $300. Mm-hmm. That, that used to be mm-hmm. that used to be <laughs> cheap as fuck. The Travis Scott four used to be the 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 bottom of the of the Travis Scott collab mm-hmm. line, and 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 yeah, now they're almost a thousand dollars. Now it's fucking ridiculous. It's mm-hmm. it's bro, like, like I can't do this anymore. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, anyways, I think that this will be it'll follow that um trend where it'll be initially the least liked. You may be able to copy for like sub fives, and then um, after a while, it's just gonna boop, 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 boop. yeah, and then full full Travis Scott mode, and then just keep climbing the ranks. Which uh, is why I need those Travis Scott I ones. Agree. Whoever's listening, send them my way. I need to get my PSA out there before <laughs> beforehand. <laughs> Give me those damn shoes because I need them before they're two thousand dollars. And 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 they just leave that the, oh. the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Please stay over. My bad, guys. Are you good? How you feeling, Miguel? Yeah. I was gonna say I agree. Um, you know, I feel like the sixes are definitely better than these. But um, take the Travis Scott um like branding off of it. I still buy these. I like them. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I don't have any sixes. Um, the one pair of sixes I had, I had the infrared, but um. I wasn't really feeling like I'm feeling those. Like, I really like those, but I gave them to my homie for retail because that's his grail. So mm-hmm. I'd rather give it to him first. But yeah. yeah, um, back to these, like I'm a fan, man. You know, I like the glow in the dark stuff. Um, they remind me of the wheat sixes that came out before, you know, because of the color. So yeah, I they like did those come too. Out those wheat um, sixes, so, you're right. Yeah, so I feel I feel the same way about these. You know, I like them. Like if I could get them, cool. But um, if I can't, I'm not gonna be really pressed. But I'm definitely gonna try yeah. for these. I like them. They're very, very nice. Yeah. I like the translucent tongue, the translucent mm, really uh, like lace lock. Do they glow in the dark? Yeah. Uh, the picture of the, I guess the, the collab, color? the chick he had wearing them, that was wearing them. Uh, let me see. Mm-hmm. Uh, bloody mm-hmm. y- yours. Uh, they were, um, there There was a picture of them oh, in blo- the dark. Bloody and Osiris? Yo, there you go. Oh, oh. The microphone's covering up. All right. If anyone, if anyone didn't know, Chris isn't the best reader. No, I'm just... Definitely not. I'm trying to look at it through the microphone, and I did not see that. Oh, I just saw the S. Sorry, bro. Sorry. Jeez. That's crazy. Uh, we made you... it. We made it past grade school. It's okay, Chris. You know, so... hey, I got my diploma. I can't take Yo. that away from me. <laughs> can't take that away from me. I can't me. take it away. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> One thing that I forgot to mention. What up? Um, I feel like the suede on this pair is like a little bit more. Well, I don't have the green ones, but you look at the green ones, right? You see that the suede on that shoe is like more like short haired, but then the mm, one yeah. the British khaki is a little bit longer haired. Yeah, and I kind of like that. Yeah. So, um. But, yeah, but these are definitely the cops. Yeah, I like. Okay. I I like um. I like these a lot, um, actually, and I'm because I'm oh, for some like I like Travis Scott's collabs from afar. Not like mm-hmm. there's not many that I really wanted, but like the sixes I've always like all his sixes I've, I've wanted. Like I just they're they're dope. Um, those yellow ones are the hardest. I can get bro. Those from, yeah, also worn mm-hmm. seventeen billion times, and I so they grew on me. Um, but I really like these. Uh, I like uh, though the the. The one he teased had the cactus jack on the tongue, on the side of the tongue. So, and so the ones that they're showing, uh, the ones that the detailed images that they're showing of them doesn't have it. And I kind of want that cactus jack on the on the tongue to that. So let me see. I'll, I'll pull it up. Hold on, see. Um, so if you see on, uh, and I'm pretty sure this is just a, a sample, but whatever. So like the mm-hmm. catch jack right there, but then on the the detail photos, they he doesn't it doesn't have um, it doesn't have it there anymore. So so it's kind of cactus jack where on the tongue. So like right on the on it's so let me, let me see. So instead of saying Air Jordan, it says cactus jack. So no, just the logo right there. 
So oh, see that? I see it there. Yeah. And then on, but on the detail photos, it doesn't have it there. It does. Oh. And so I would, I kind of would want it there. If, okay. Like, I don't, and you know, again, you know, maybe Chris is just looking for a way out. You know, I'm just, I'm just on this shoe. Find, find my ways. Oh no, it's now, actually still there. Oh, it is. Oh, I'll tell him. It's actually him, still there. When you no, go to it is. It's just, oh, it's just really light. It? So let me see if I can zoom in on this. It's yep. really light. Mm-hmm. Oh shit, that it's is still there. there, huh? Oh damn. Oh, so okay, I'm back in. I think my favorite part about that shoe is the tongue. <laughs> I really like, like the tongue. Like that, the the translucent top end of the tongue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it really makes the shoe, because it kind of like it kind of binds it. Uh, at least the the color blocking, mm. it binds it like a sandwich, bro. Where where the tongue and oh, the I see soul, what you mean. Yes. Yeah, uh, binds it like a sandwich. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, look at me, Call it, bro. All right, so uh, you and uh, you and Miguel going into business now? Sneaker design? Sneaker, what are we doing? Sneaker egg, sneaker egg sandwich, bro. It's my own name. <laughs> sneaker egg sneaker sandwich. Egg sandwich. <laughs> hey, bro. We're about um, to make a, a sandwich shop with nothing but uh, shoe-related sandwiches. See. Let's do it. I feel like there's hey, a Hey, yo, that. that'd be fire. I feel like the pepperoni pippin sandwich, bro? Let's run it. Pepperoni pippin, bro. <laughs> are you gonna, are, wait, are, is it going to be... Is it going to be... Is it going to be... Uh, all uh all digital so is it gonna be are you gonna do like where it's like separated and then it closes into a sandwich or are you just trying to do like color wise into it for a sandwich oh i was just i was just there was no real correlation between the sandwich and the and the shoe oh and just by the way anybody that <laughs> is just... listening to this podcast that that will be that will be trademarked by the end by the end of the show so uh don't even try oh it. yeah don't even take my pepperoni <laughs> <pepper laughs> sandwich because y'all kicking rocks <laughs> yeah there was no real correlation bro i just kind of wanted to create a uh you know that yeah i didn't really plan it through <laughs> yeah you're good um run it back turbo What's so uh yeah so um you gave you said it was you said this is making this the bottom of your Travis Scott's list as of right now, yeah. Okay. What and, about you? And and, and and that includes the 270 because the 270 is really growing on me as of late. Are you sure? Yeah, it's really it's really growing on me as of lately. And I think it's only growing on me because it's the affordable collab. <laughs> I can afford it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's why it's growing on me. And also because I saw a pair that they they um painted the reverse swoosh on the on the front end. Mm-hmm. So it, it it uses up a lot of that empty space. Mm-hmm. So I really liked it after that. Cause I, I think they provide you with that stencil. They do. Yeah. Yeah, so the the shoe comes with the stencil to paint your own sw- reverse swoosh on on it. Mm. So yeah, 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 I'm hella down for that. <laughs> uh, yeah. what about you, Miguel? How you? Where's this like ranking right now with your Travis Scott? Like Travis Scotts that have dropped so far. And this is, of course, you know, without the having it in one? hand. Yeah, yeah, I've never seen. I've only seen the sixes in hand because somebody that I know has them, but um. Mm. I feel like the best ones, the best collab that he's had so far is definitely the one. Um, obviously, like that's like the best, best one. But uh-huh. I feel like this isn't the worst one. I feel like the worst one for me is definitely the two seventy. <laughs> yeah, it was like a that. different. Like it was shit. a different approach for that one for sure. The cactus trails. Yeah, yeah it was a different approach, and they mm-hmm. had, and they had a, uh, they had McFoley, bro. It was a different approach for <laughs> sure. That was dope. That yeah, was it, was. Cool. it was. It was. It was. Cool. Definitely was. Um, and I don't even want to. I just really to go back. I don't even want to label me picking the six at the bottom as the worst one, because mm. if 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 I'm being really honest, it, I would say the two seventy and then the British khaki, mm. um, working its way up. But like none of them are really bad to me. Um, yeah, exactly. I think I think the one by by like default that goes at the bottom and not because it's the worst but it's because it's the most plain mm-hmm. um i would say is, is uh his uh his air force is the the sail the sail pair the, um he has a pair of all white air forces um actually i'm lying there is a shoe that's worse than the on um, the 270 the trunner he did the charles oh, Scott trunner. true he did do the trunner. that's the that that's yeah, I might use I might use worse I might use worse on that one too. 
Yeah, but like, but yeah, ain't yeah. nobody buying the Trunners, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm good on those. Um, I think for me, I think so. For me, these will definitely now the Trunners because I've just the first time I ever seen them. But yeah, <laughs> the bottom. Um, but then I think it will go two seventy. Then the British khaki. Um, okay, but it's us because you guys know I don't like I don't like ones like that. The Travis Scott ones are low on my list for his. Yeah, like both highs and low. Yeah, so okay. there it's it when I see it, it could jump over both of those, possibly. But everybody knows sixes are are my are my shoes, so that's you know shoes. Yeah, you're a bulky sit, Jordan guy. Yeah, they sit they sit high on my list, but um, I really like this shoe. Um, mm-hmm. I'm. I, I'm gonna try, but I know I'm probably. I can't imagine it. Chris wearing a Travis Scott shoe. Like, <laughs> just it, it doesn't it doesn't sit like, it does, <laughs> like right like just like oh he he hit like oh nah nah dude, yeah. definitely if I if I, I mean, could if I can get on like if I can get these like I would be I would uh-huh. be down. I would I would definitely uh-huh. be down to try it because I feel like these would be the I don't, and this is me trying to jump ahead but I feel like these could probably be the easiest I could probably be able to sneak a win on in some way. Maybe uh, a nice, uh, a nice little small resale uh, price tag, but nothing like crazy, crazy. Nothing okay, out of okay. this world like how I feel like most of the Travis Scotts are for me. Like yeah. I'm, I'm not most of these. I'm not. I'm not chasing after. I might chase after these for like a day, see how I feel, and then you know go after them. But like for like that for for me this yeah the British khaki would probably be right below the the lows the uh, Travis Scott one low and then. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I see it and if I like it, it, it could like if I see more pictures of it, I really like like the like real details on it. I think I'll probably mm-hmm. put it above both of those. The ones you'll bump it up, yeah, the highs and the lows. Just my opinion. Okay. Do you think we get like a a a, a creative rollout like we got for the dunks? Of course, there's. I mean, he kind of almost always does in some fashion or another. So I think so. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like a one. Well, well, no, because wait, did wait? Was it him that or no, 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 it wasn't him. Wait, was it him that uh, yeah. dropped his? Uh, oh no, that was the weekend. I'm sorry, I'm tripping. I'm, I'm I got art, my artist mixed up. I was thinking because I was thinking of uh, uh, there was an artist that dropped a tour date for the end of this year, and I thought it was Travis Scott, but it was actually the weekend. No, it was the weekend. Yeah. yeah. So never mind. Mm-hmm. I was I thought he was gonna do I I was gonna say he could probably do some kind of like some weird some cool little thing like a tour rollout yeah so yeah no but nah never mind it's negative bro <laughs> um yeah so uh where am I at? where am I at? there I am uh speaking of uh uh well not speaking of anything uh next on our list uh Zion Zion Wilson yeah uh we got mm-hmm. a look at the Zion uh Z code uh which is a look mm-hmm. at his uh signature shoe. Uh, mm-hmm. That's supposed to be releasing in the spring. Yeah. Um. You guys, they had a teaser photo, right? Just one yeah. photo of it. Yeah, it just it was just yeah. the front. Yeah. yeah. Um, I saw that. What are you guys' thoughts of what you guys saw so far? Um, when I saw that tongue, it reminded me of the of the uh, the early Nike Hyperdunks. Mm. Um. They had a tongue similar to that. Yeah. Um, and my second thought was the shoe itself, although we don't know what it looks like. Yeah. It looks uh it looks lightweight. Mm. Um and I don't I don't I assumed that because he's a bigger dude, it would be a bigger model. Yeah. Um so I don't know. I'm 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 really curious to see what that back end looks like and if they have like any um like Air Max in it or something like that, mm-hmm. um, because because lately Jordan Jordan and, and their trainers they're they're trending with uh, a lot of the Air Max units, mm-hmm. and from what I'm reading on the reviews, like they're they're really good shoes uh, um, for them to enter that 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 new, or it's not new to them but to re-enter uh, more creatively I guess because their models look really good like the Deltas. Um, the M2As or something like that, or the MA2s. 
Um, like they're, 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 I really like them. Um, I actually just bought a pair for my mom. They're on sale. Um, and depending on what, depending on how they look in hand, I'm definitely caught me a pair. But uh, yeah, I'm just curious to see if they transition um, to the to the sports world of basketball with the Air Max units and stuff like that. Better better utilize is what I mean. Of what I meant to say. Okay. Uh, Miguel, how you feeling? For me, um, I just, just hope the shoe could contain Zion. We don't want another <laughs> uh, PG 2.5 situation where he yeah. busts out the shoe, you know? Like, he's a really big dude. He's like, what is he, like 6'6", six, 6'7", six, 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 like 280? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bouncing huge. up and down, he's playing in the paint. Um, You know, yeah, he's a big guy, so he needs um a sneaker that can contain him. Uh, the shoe mm-hmm. looks fairly wide. I mean, like, there's a big outrigger for his support. Um. I hope that like that that uh textile that they use is like uh sturdy enough to like contain them. But then at the same time, like these brands are like like when when these well at least from what I think, um definitely Nike probably does is like they'll probably take like the signature athlete and then like they'll make a last of the shoe to their foot just to make sure that it supports them correctly. So they won't do that for any of us, but mm-hmm. at least I hope that like what he gets, we get to. So um, yeah. mm-hmm. I hope the shoe contains it enough. You know, um, the tongue, when I look at it, I can't help but think of an Insta Pump Fury because of like the padding and everything. Okay. I look at it and that's uh-huh. what I'm thinking about. But his logo, I don't like like that. Um, this colorway, I mean, from what I see, like, yeah, the ZW, yeah. like I could see like it's a Z and then a one. Mm-hmm. And then the one also makes the W. So it's mm-hmm. cool, but I'm not that big of a fan of his logo. But um, mm-hmm. I'm excited to see the back half, like how Gabe said. But um, this colorway, I'm not really feeling it that much, uh, at least from what I've seen. But it's probably like, you know, like with the 34, I believe. Yeah, with the 34, yeah. they did like a colorway yeah. for his little brother. Mm-hmm. So that's probably what this is inspired off of. But I'm, I'm good on it. Yeah. I'm, they also I'm, have the, the Bayou Boys, right? Mm-hmm. The, but for him, no, yeah. like the Bayou Boys was like for him. Um, for him playing in uh New Orleans, but like I know they did like another colorway that like, was like a bunch of scribbles, and that was uh, based off his little brother. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's dope. So you kind of, you could kind of, you could yeah. probably kind of make it out a little bit on the uh sides of like the little uh for the the laces. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's I think that's mm-hmm. where you could kind of you could probably go for that. Um, I'm I like yeah I'm I'm kind of more of a wait and see kind of person on these. Um, mm-hmm. I I I I honestly thought. I don't know like exactly how far they are with these, especially if they're coming out in the spring. Um, I would think that he would have worn for the All Star Weekend or the just mm-hmm. pass. I thought he would at least wear mm-hmm. for the game, but he didn't. So it's kind of like not even uh, not even shoot around. Nah. So it's kind of weird that he didn't. I want. I wonder if they're like. I wonder when this like. I wonder when this had came out and like when they had like finished. Uh, uh, working on these, but I would thought that they were like, if this was something that they were doing, that they should have already like, yo, make it for at least All Star Weekend. But then maybe they didn't know because what we didn't know what until like what a month ago if this was actually going to happen in Atlanta. So I'm oh, pretty yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, you know, actually they, not. Yeah, I think I might have been less than that, bro. So I'm, been yeah, so I'm pretty sure they probably weren't like prepping for that. They were kind of just like, yeah, well, you know, we'll see mm-hmm. kind of thing. But um, so I'm pretty sure we'll probably see in the back half of the season for sure at some point. Um, but yeah, I would definitely, I want to see the back, um, other shoe, uh, this, this is, a. um, I'm interested. I'm more interested than anything. I don't think I have anything, uh, particularly in depth on this because I wish I would have saw it like more, more deep. Cause they only, if you guys, anybody that's seen this, they only showed the front, the front half of the front of the shoe. So it's literally no side view or anything like that. So you don't even know, like what the like how like panel wise how it breaks down when on the side and on the back and all that stuff you just see the logo um mm-hmm. yeah i don't like the logo either it feels like kind of plain <laughs> like that feel like they could have did something like a little bit more you know in depth with the sign rooms and logo but yeah um i just wanted to get your thoughts because you know they jumped out and we had talked about this about possibly having um when we would get a zion signature shoe and yeah, yeah, so we did. What, this is second year, second year, right? Yeah, year. no, is is yeah, no, is, isn't it his? Isn't it his, his second first year? No, well, Zion didn't play last year. Yeah, he did. 
talking about? He did, long? but he was like uh, on. I think he was injured on and off. But yeah, yeah it's his second year. Oh shit! Sure, really? Yeah. Okay, so it's just, mm-hmm. like this is first sec- his first full season though. So far, it will you know for for as an NBA standpoint, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm tripping. Yeah. Oh yeah, he did because he remember remember um girl, I remember because we did a uh we did an episode as talking about if we would uh what uh we were talking about like what he would uh debut in what we do his first uh game what shoe would he wear, and then mm-hmm. it came out that I don't think he wasn't gonna I don't think he started the season off. So it was you know he was just kind of sitting around and then he uh, they they brought him they brought him in and he played a little bit but they were doing minute restrictions on him and remember he oh yeah because he had came in and remember they he was killing and like every time he came in he would do really good and then they would sit mm-hmm. him at that thirty two minute mark or whatever twenty four minute mark or whatever but it was always like right yep, when he, he was would, on like, the just started getting hit he started heating up for the game and then they were just like nope you're sitting down oh so, yeah 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 you're right you're right. So, um, I'm just, bro. The twenty, the nineteen, the twenty, and the twenty twenty one season to me have just been encapsulated into one season. Yeah, and like I just, I, I didn't get that normal like pause to really start a new season over again <laughs> in terms yeah. of like mentally. Yeah. 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 Um. Well, yeah. So yeah, hopefully we will get a look at that down the line. Mm-hmm. Um. Last on the list, uh, let's talk about the Yeezy 450 clouds. Uh, so, mm. you know, I'm, I'm going to hand the reins over to uh, the host of the show since he is, you know, he is Kanye's uh, secret designer. Uh, we, uh, it's yet to be proven, but I know that, you know, Gabe Yet to be proven, but... I, I know Gabe spends a lot of time in Calabasas, in, but he I'm never in, tells me why I'm in he's those, out there. I'm in those email threads, bro. I'm in those email <laughs> threads, you know. CC didn't they just ask they just ask me for colors. That's it. That's it. Oh, okay. I don't I don't really do anything. Uh uh I I just got asked whether I like this shoe or not over the weekend as well. Mm-hmm. And um I told I said as my sister, I told her I don't like this shoe, but I still want it. And like I want it to, in the sense of like I want to get my own opinion for it. Okay. But like vis- visually is one thing, but I'm still intrigued as to like what that shoe feels like on feet. Mm. Um, you know, is it comfortable? Like it, it, it looks like a fucking potato sack, but I still want to try it out because it looks like a comfortable potato sack. Mm-hmm. So you know, like, yeah, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little indifferent about this shoe. It conceptually, it's 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 wild. Yeah, like when people put on this shoe and they got really good fits with it, it just look, it just it's so weird because you sit kind of high mm-hmm. with that shoe sits kind of high even with its midsole. It reminds me of like um, I don't I'm definitely gonna butcher like the history here, but uh, do you guys ever seen like old old like old Japanese like uh. Uh, like samurai um and they have their they have like their their wooden clogs on mm-hmm. they're not like actual sandals they're like they're like wooden mm-hmm. so you kind of just sit on like two planks of wood there mm-hmm. um, yes like the samurai jack how, yeah that's kind of how i feel that shoe looks like if you look at a person's side profile that back end is like this much higher than the the, the forefront of the mm-hmm. shoe so like I'm just curious like what do you feel with that shoe on? There's a whole bunch of things that come into my mind. But I overall, like for me, no, go um, ahead. It reminds me of these, of the uh, Space Hippie 04. Okay. Um, so I was I I had a conversation with my cousin and he's like, yo, like, um, have you thought about buying that shoe? I was like, um, I wasn't really the biggest fan of it, but no. Um, but he was mm-hmm. like, "Yo, like, I think you should get it. I feel like it would really fit your aesthetic." And I'm like, "All right, cool." Because now that I look, now that I look at it, what the space it reminds me of this shoe? Okay. Um, no, the um, the 450, but it reminds me of the Space Hippie 04. But, okay. Okay. Um, I sent you guys a picture in the chat. Like, yeah. I wish that the 450 looked like the this one that was a sample that had a little bit of like that the um, blue. those blue lines on yeah. it. I guess. And um, it had like that extra panel. I wish it would have still had that, but oh, I um, see what you mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, yeah, but I'm, I like it. I mean, if I could get it, let's see. But um, putting it together is gonna be difficult. That's the thing. Because <laughs> yeah, like, it literally it, looks like 
it looks like the Venom symbiote is like encompassing your foot. Yeah. For those who know about Spider Man, that's what it looks yeah. like. It's like literally like coming on your foot. It's crazy, but and you definitely see. can't rock like normal jeans, even like even to like normal aesthetics. Like I think that shoe makes every jean look like a bell bottom. Yeah, so unless, like this is... mm-hmm. unless you have like something, yeah, like you just gotta like that picture right there is fucking fire, bro. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. that shoe is just it's a it's a weird shoe, and it only further fucking proves that Kanye's on some other uh, creativity, and whether we see it or not, it's still gonna work. Yeah, kind of thing. So. Thanks. Yeah, I I like it. I really like it. <laughs> it I, I don't know it why. Is. I really I, I I I'm not a Yeezy fan, so I don't like I don't get it. But I look yeah. at this shoe and I just something about it is just like I like it. Yeah, I re- I I really like this fucking shoe. And so like I'm, I'm with you, gay. Like I really want to get this shoe just because I want to be able to like see it and like put it on and see like how it feels. It's like that because it mm-hmm. yeah. Like I feel like it's like if. Anything, if anything, we have learned from Kanye when it comes to his shoes is comfort is always going to be the on the on the yeah on the top. They, they got to be on Kanye's shoes. feet all yeah. day. He's a dad, you know. You need exactly, that dad you know, comfort. Walking around, walking around in, the, in those tall mm-hmm. grasses in Wyoming, go, you know. True. You know, he also has shoes. a new a new slide coming out with this shoe too. Oh, those little uh, the oh, one that look like. Uh, no, he has a a whole new one. So he has the regular, the first one that came out. Then he has the the clog runner, yeah. And then for now he has the four fifty. So the shoes a four fifty one, and the slide is a four fifty. The uh, I think was it Kim Kardashian like posted on her on her page, right? That was that's What's the, the four fifty. The yeah the that was the slide you're talking about, right? They were saying um, it looks like those uh those little uh. I don't know, bro. I don't really follow her, bro. You know. I don't either. Oh, just... you're talking about the. Oh, okay, yes, I see them. I see them. Uh, easy for easy for fifty. Yeah, easy for fifty slide. I see it. Yeah, cause this, this sh- wait is this shoe called the four fifty or the four fifty one? There's yeah, uh, all the all the, bar, all the places I've read have said that the shoe is the four fifty, but I'm okay. saying that everybody's saying the four fifty. Like when I see like the files, it always says four fifty one for the for the shoe itself. Okay. Cause I'm I'm a little com- I was a little confused. If they share the same name, yeah, yeah, that was the one. Uh, she but she was wearing a uh, she was wearing like an orange one, or like a tannish orange or whatever. Let's see if I can find it. I wonder if she po- I don't know if she posted on her actual page or it was like a story thing or something like that. Uh, yo, know. but I they they the roast and I'm like, they roasted my boy right here though. This is when I was like, maybe I can't buy this. Damn, shit. <laughs> they said you look like a dumpling. Damn. Yeah, they got. <laughs> I like it though. I mean, I don't know. It's it's like really avant garde, like really like weird looking. I'm 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 a fan of it. Like the yeah. slide though, like I feel like his whole like design aesthetic just looks like organic. Like it's super weird. Yeah. Like the way like the stuff looks. It looks like, like a living thing is on your foot. It's super weird. They said that her her slides again. Like it looks these. like venom. <laughs> Oh wow! She was like, "Yo, this, she was like, yo, <laughs> yo, they did it wrong." Damn, <laughs> those things slap though. I, no, I they do though. That's the thing. They do. I, I had some today, bro. I legit bought some today. Like, oh my god. Where, so, yeah, what so every like I don't every even know the name. I just every literally, bro. Every Hispanic culture has a different name for them. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what they were called. Like, I didn't want to. Bu- I didn't want to butcher them. Yeah, 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 I don't know. I like, just didn't buy them, like, bro. They're so like, fire. Literally, just fire. Every I've heard every name for them. Like, I, no. it is what it is. I mean, I, the the person knows what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Good, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's run it, bro. Just everybody, it. everybody knows that. Everybody knows that little bag of them. Everything like yeah. Yeah, and let me, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Um. No. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because I'm getting some blogs are saying 450 are the shoes, and then some are saying they're mm-hmm. 451 are the slides. I'm, I mean, the 450s are the slides. Um. I don't know. 
Um, besides, yeah, I'm, I'm not cool on, but I do want I do want that shoe. I'm not gonna lie, uh, and I and it will be the first Yeezy I own. Um, uh-huh. I'm saying it like I'm gonna get it, but I feel like I'm gonna get it. Um, it will be the first Yeezy I own, and I'm gonna be mad if it becomes the shoe that I wear every day. Because my Vapor Maxes are my, uh, my Flyknit Vapor Maxes are my everyday shoe. I'll be mad if those become my everyday shoe. I don't want to give. I don't. I, I need, don't want. I don't want to give credit. Yeah, no, I I can't buy I can't buy another Yeezy until I buy the Yeezys that I do want. Which ones? Which which, which I ones? really want to I really want a pair of uh, seven hundred V threes. So I have yet to get. I have yet mm. to land any of them. I just realized um, I asked which ones. Like I know what the fuck. <laughs> what, what the fuck am so I? The, the seven hundred V three is this one. It's kind of hard to tell. Oh my god. I yeah. want the um, the ones that are coming out on um, the seven hundred V two creams because they look like the statics, and my cousin has those. And the more Bro. I see him wear them, I'm like, man, those are kind of good. The static is is uh is blowing up in resale right now, which is crazy because mm-hmm. the V two is low. The, the V two was very short lived, um, in the, yes. the easy market. So now it's making its way back, and now people are trying to buy the older ones and. But this is a 700 V3, Chris, this, sh- mm, this model. Okay. okay. And I really, really like this model. Mm-hmm. Like, this I model I don't like it is, like, that. like, it just reminds me of, like, um, I don't I know, like man. I don't know what it I is. Yeah. I don't know what it is, bro, but I just really like this model. Um, so I want to buy a pair of these, and I want to buy a pair of Quantums. The uh the basketball you can get them for retail on Mr. Porter. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, yeah, you yeah. Get them on Mr. Porter. Oh, there's really? a bunch of there's a bunch of sites that have them for retail still. Mm. Um, well, not a bunch, but there's a few options for retail. Um, I just don't know my colorways for them. So I want I want to cop the first one that dropped, but that one dropped like three times already, and it's been it's been like, yeah, I don't, yeah, whatever. But <laughs> I'll, I need to figure it out, and that's the one I want. Okay. Yep, um, yep. I didn't. I didn't I ask. Did, did any of you guys want the ones or hit on the ones this past this weekend? Past weekend? Yeah. I didn't hit. I yeah. got them actually. Oh shit! Oh, shit. There he is. I got them, yeah. but um, I gave them to my friends for retail. Oh well. Because I know that he wanted them more than me, so I was like, "Nah, I'm good." Look at that! Damn man, look, look, look at, at that. that, bro. Just because, because the only reason why I don't have them is because. Out the gate, they're like four fifty, five hundred already, mm. and I'm just not. I'm just not. I'm not like, doing it. Nah. Yeah, I can't. Uh, uh-uh. I was. I was. Um, I'm really surprised that they're that high, though. I'm not gonna lie. Are you? Are? Um, and th- yeah, and they're apparently pretty limited. There's a really limited run on those. I was. I was talking. Uh, like all the like sneaker Twitter and all that stuff, and like trying mm-hmm. to hit all the links and. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why I stayed up. It didn't work out for you. To do that. Yeah. Cause I didn't go to, cause I took a nap the day before uh-huh. and cause I, like, I just got home and so I was like super tired. And so I, you know, yeah. it was like, I'm just, I, before I unpacked everything, I just went to sleep and mm-hmm. decided like, uh, when I woke up, cause it, it got to like three o'clock, four o'clock. And I was like, well, I really want these. And I was like, but I'm, I'm, I know if I go to sleep, I'm not waking up. Like no matter how many alarms I set, I'm going to go back to sleep. I'm not, I'm not waking up. So I decided to stay up and just, you know, see if I could do it. It was the, it was, I, I should have just got sleep. Honestly, mm-hmm. I should just, just got my, my eight hours. It wasn't, it wasn't worth it. L, nah, yeah, bro. Nah. L, Don't L, every link L, 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 L. So yeah, no, now I'm reloading up for the fours. I'm good. Reloading April, for here the, I come. Uh, yeah, April, here I come. I gave up already. Already tired. Already? I sold off my shoes, bro. I don't own any of them anymore. What are you talking about? Damn, just got them all gone, huh? <laughs> the gate. Um, but yeah, man, I gotta, I gotta take a quick break while I go find my uh, plug in my charger. So, uh, I'll be back. I'm out here with, I don't have socks on, right? Because I came out the shower, and Lord, I slept on the floor. Holy shit! It's it's Bless cold you. as hell. Your whole oh shit. man. 
But while I was up, I figured I had to, you know, I had to, I was like, I can't let Miguel be the only one with shoes on the damn thing. See. And be like, come on, bro. <laughs> See, it's the paparazzi uh, Brooklyn projects. Those are tough. Yeah, bro. Um, I actually got two of these when I camped out for them. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I flipped the shit out of the second pair. Like, I sold it to some guy in New York. Damn. Uh, of course. Some guy in New York, uh, he paid me. Well, he didn't pay me. My friend had sold him the Walk of Fames like some time before. So he was like, yo, I got this guy who wants the highs as well. I I, I totally raped him with the lows. I'm going to rape him again with the highs. And I'm like, uh, damn. I, I I was like oh, I was like okay bro I was like I'll just I'll just get my Damn. money and then, mm-hmm. and then you can have some too for for middleman in the transaction. So needless to say, we both got to eat. Um, sorry for whoever that was that we ate off of you, but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah he, yeah yeah it was a good time. And I think like even 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 like looking back on it like. Yeah, bro, we got it's yeah, my bad, my bad guy. <laughs> hey man, but he was the one throwing out the numbers, bro. Okay, so we was just trying to eat. That's all it was. Okay. Yeah, but I I know I I wish I'd have to cut out, but I hit the one percent, and I was like, oh shit, I had a jam out. Um, but, yeah, we we the end of the show, regardless. Mm-hmm. So, um, we're gonna close out there. Um. Is there any final thoughts, any last impressions uh, that you guys want to leave with the, the people? That's the negative, man. I mean, just thank you again for having me on. You know, oh, appreciate um, it. Yeah, man. Uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, say some words, some kind words. You know, thank you for Miguel coming back. Um, definitely uh, a real, real genuineness, if that even is a word, uh, and for our. Uh, like just the the vibe and mm. i i don't even like using that word because i feel like use another word bro you know <laughs> but just but use another the word, word yeah but vibe is just like we really have an organic vibe when we get to talk to you about this stuff and mm. it's, it's really dope because um it just makes everything flow better easier like the the type of conversations the quality of conversation Mm-hmm. Like it just, it just, it's a better wholesome experience, and it's pretty dope, bro. And I appreciate that for coming back. No problem. Yeah, I, I, um, thank you, Miguel, again uh, for always stopping by. Like we really appreciate, it, especially for coming back twice. <laughs> um, I know we, uh, I know you're on the East Coast, so we, we, we're sh- we're shooting at night for you. So we're, you know, we apologize that we take up your, your time. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, tell him again, real quick. Go ahead. I forgot. I fucked up, Chris. Uh, I wore this sweater for a reason. Okay. Because I did want to say that this sweater is coming back. Oh, I was gonna give, um, you, I was gonna give you a spot. Oh well, what the give you fuck, a spot. Chris? I was gonna give what you a spot. Fuck? You know I was gonna I'm give you a here. spot. You know I was gonna, gonna give throw, you a spot. I'm gonna throw this box at you. <laughs> <laughs> ah. um, well, no, before before we get before we get to that, um, again, Miguel, uh, please let them know where they can find you, um, where uh, where they can uh, see your content, all that stuff. Uh, you can find me at Spider Migs on Instagram. Um, I have a couple videos up on YouTube. Uh, you know, you can find some new concepts. I haven't dropped one in a minute, but there's one coming soon that I'm gonna try to do. Uh, so you can find me from my concepts on Instagram, and you know, at Spider Migs and. You know, uh, I talk to anybody about shoes, so hit me up. Hey, right, man, and it, it's it's some dope content that Miguel puts up, man. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been following him for a, a couple of weeks now since meeting him. Well, like a week, a week and a half. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's just cool, man, because it, it, I really do feel like I'm just viewing things in a different world. Like, if that makes sense, like just following you and, and what you post and and how you go about it and the things that you post and the things that you talk about. I'm just like, man, this guy is on the other side of the fucking nation. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's just, it just feels different. It's it's just cool, man. I, I'm, I'm rambling because it, uh, it's all new to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all new to me. It's following people that aren't from yeah. my general area. Yeah. So it's cool. It's cool. 
now yeah um i i really appreciate yeah um we uh we love we love i you know as gabe said like we love your content um i love seeing you um you spot shoes while you're uh you're out on your story <laughs> like that's I, I don't know why but something about that i just i just enjoy so um uh, yeah, make sure that you guys follow him on everything, all social media, all that. Um, make sure you guys follow his uh, his uh, or subscribe to his YouTube channel. That will be in the link below, as well as I'm going to uh, put the little annotation uh, thing on the video so they can just click right over. Um, mm -hmm. With that, um, I will leave you guys. Uh, Gabe, uh, here's your spot. Give us okay. the give us the, the update on the on our uh, close. Yeah, so um, we have new stuff coming. Uh, we have uh, some original design stuff coming. Uh, and then we have a restock on this hoodie. So it'll only be the black one, um, not the lavender one, um, only because one time crunch, two, just like, you know, we we felt like the black one was a more popular one. Mm. So for the time being, just off of that, um, I let people grab it um, for a couple night wears in the spring and the summer. Come back in the fall, we'll probably bring it back different colors, this, that, and the third. But for right now, we just wanted to at least provide the, the opportunity to, to cop. Yeah. If you do, didn't get to the first time. I did. Uh, we do. Oh, my bad. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, don't, worry, bro, I, I, don't worry, I tallied, I tallied you into the production numbers this time on purpose. Let's go. Let's I, go. Yeah. <clears throat> but, but, uh, yeah, we have that restock. We have another, um, we have another restock coming up of another design that I will just leave at that. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, the original stuff. So hopefully fingers crossed everything is here in like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, we can get it out to the, to the people. Yep. And also, stuff will be here sooner than rather than later. Yeah, and also don't forget, uh, we have a raffle coming uh, soon as well. So make sure you guys keep your eye out for that. Um, we are, we'll be working on that. So you know, just just keep 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 your ears uh, keep your ears open or eyes open, ears open, I guess too. Yeah, and keep them to the streets. There you go. Keep them to the streets. I don't know. I don't know how to yeah. like. Yeah, keep it's all good, Chris. Open or closed? We, or we know you're from the suburbs. It's okay. Sorry. Right. Is up? Sorry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, make sure you guys do that. Uh, also, please, uh, with that being said, make sure that you guys follow us. You guys can check out all those um, updates. Um, well, our website is on Lace.Family, so make sure you guys check that out. Um, that's where all the uh, – all the products will be going to all the clothes, hoodies, everything will be going to um, when they release. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you guys follow Unlace X Threads. Uh, that's where all the updates will come. So when they're in, um, uh, we will be letting you guys know when those will be dropping. You guys will get an exact date. Know when to mm -hmm. know when to uh, be ready for that as well. Uh, if you guys like our content, please follow us on Unlace X Podcast. Uh, check out all their uh, past episodes on Unlaced um, on YouTube. As well, um, we're on all streaming platforms, Apple Music, I mean, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or Anchor, all those great platforms. Uh, make sure you guys rank us uh, five stars. Make sure you guys like our, mm -hmm. our videos, um, all that great stuff. And with that, I, you know, I would say we're going we're gonna to become gatekeepers because these kids reselling, using their mom's money, we got to, we got to become gatekeepers. Finally, got to. I'm got telling to, you, man. I'm telling you, that was our have to lock in and just say, you know what, we're not, we're not having this anymore. Um, well, with that, I will say, uh, wear your guys' shoes. Uh, and yeah. Thank you. you guys have a good night. We are out of here. <laughs>